Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you how to solve a system of nonlinear equations and two variables. A nonlinear system of equations is a system that has one or more equations that's not linear. A solution to a nonlinear system, just like a solution to a linear system, is going to be an ordered pair. You'll write that as an xy pair. And it's going to be real value coordinates that satisfies both equations in the system. In our first example, we're going to solve the system using the substitution method. Remember, the substitution method has you substitute one equation into the other. To do that, one of your equations needs to be written in terms of one of the variables. Notice that our first equation can be written as y equals 5 minus 2x. You do that and you can substitute it into the second equation for y. We'll have x squared plus 5 minus 2x squared equals 50. We're going to multiply that binomial. Notice that it's a perfect square trinomial. So we have 25 minus 20x plus 4x squared equals 50. Combine all of the like terms on the left hand side and you have 5x squared minus 20x plus 25 equals 50. Let's subtract 50 from both sides because you're noticing, right, that we have a polynomial. We have 5x squared minus 20x minus 25 equals 0. We can factor out a GCF of 5. And we have x squared minus, whoops, 4x minus 5 equals 0. Now, we can factor that trinomial, two numbers that multiply to negative 5 but add to negative 4. Well, those would be x minus 5 times x plus 1. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Negative 5 plus 1 equals negative 4. Now, you apply that zero product property. You have 5 equals 0. That is not a true statement, so we toss it out. We have x minus 5 equals 0, or x equals 5. x plus 1 equals 0, or x equals negative 1. Now, a solution is an ordered pair, an x, y. We're not done here. Notice that the two equations we have are a line and a circle. That line is going to intersect the circle in at least one point. Here it looks like it's going to intersect in two places. So now that you have your x value, you're going to substitute that back in to your equation. We can use y equals 5 minus 2x to get the y coordinate. Our first value, when x equals 5, y equals 5 minus 2 times 5. 5 minus 10, or negative 5. That gives us the ordered pair of 5, negative 5. Our second value of x equals negative 1 would have a y coordinate of y equals 5 minus 2 times negative 1, 5 plus 2, or 7. So this is the point negative 1, 7. Now, you want to take both of these ordered pairs and substitute them back into both of these equations and verify that they check. I'll tell you that I have checked both of them, so they're both solutions. So we can put a comma between them, and we put brackets around it to denote that these are both solutions to the system. In example two, we're going to solve the system using the addition method. Remember, when you're adding two equations, you're trying to eliminate one of the variables. So you want to be adding an opposite somewhere. 
So here, notice that we can multiply the first equation by negative 4, and that will eliminate our x squared. Our first equation would become negative 4x squared minus 4y squared equals negative 64. Our second equation remains the same. And now we're just going to add. Our x variable is eliminated. Our y variable becomes 5y squared equal to negative 28. Let's divide by 5, and we have y squared equals negative 28 over 5. Well, we want to know the value of y, so we need to take the square root. And we'll have y equals plus or minus the square root of negative 28 over 5. Do you remember what happens when you take the square root of a negative? You get an imaginary number. So this is not a real number solution. And if you remember the definition of a solution to a nonlinear system of equations, it needs to be real value coordinates. So not real here means it's not a solution. So if we don't have a solution, then our solution set is the empty set. Let's look at an application example. So remember, we're solving a system of nonlinear equations and two variables. So we need to end up with two variables and two equations. The perimeter of a rectangular rug is 40 feet, and the area is 96 square feet. Find the dimensions of the rug. Well, I'm a visual person, so I'm going to draw a picture of my rectangular rug. And I know that my rug has a length and a width. I notice the keywords perimeter and area. Perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. And area is equal to the length times the width. I know that my perimeter is 40 feet. So 40 equals 2 length plus 2 width. Notice that they all have 2 in common, so we can divide by 2, and this is equivalent to 20 equals length plus width. We're also told that the area is 96 square feet. So 96 equals length times width. Look, we have our two equations. We have 20 equals length plus width, and we have 96 equals length times width. I prefer to use substitution, so I'm going to rewrite my first equation in terms of w. Subtract l from both sides, and you get w equals 20 minus l. I can substitute this into the second equation for w. So we'll have 96 equals length times 20 minus the length. Let's distribute. 96 equals 20l minus l squared. Let's bring everything to the left-hand side. So we'll add L squared, and we'll subtract 20L. So our left-hand side will be L squared minus 20L plus 96 equals 0. Notice that we have a polynomial. We have a trinomial. We can factor this. So we'll have L here for our variable. We're looking for the two numbers that are going to multiply to 96, and they're also going to add to a negative 20. A little trial and error, and you should quickly find that those two numbers are negative 12 and negative 8. Now you use the zero product property. L minus 12 equals 0, and L minus 8 equals 0. 
add 12 to both sides. The first option is the length equals 12, and the second is the length equals 8. They both work. So if our length equals 12 feet, then our width is equal to 20 minus 12 or 8 feet. So our rug is going to be 12 feet by 8 feet. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you'll check out some of my other math videos.